What was the name of the garden where Adam and Eve lived? The garden where Adam and Eve lived is commonly known as the Garden of Eden. Described in the book of Genesis, chapters 2 and 3, the Garden of Eden is portrayed as a lush and paradisiacal sanctuary created by God as a dwelling place for the first human beings. It is depicted as a place of abundance, beauty, and intimacy with God, filled with diverse vegetation, rivers, and trees, including the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Within this idyllic setting, Adam and Eve enjoyed perfect communion with each other and with their Creator, free from sin, shame, or death. However, their disobedience to God's command not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil resulted in their expulsion from the garden and the introduction of sin and its consequences into the world. The story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden serves as a foundational narrative in Judeo-Christian theology, exploring themes of temptation, disobedience, and the human condition. Who was the first king of Israel? Saul, a prominent figure in the biblical narrative, was anointed as the first king of Israel by the prophet Samuel. Saul's reign marked a significant transition in Israel's history, transitioning from a loose confederation of tribes governed by judges to a centralized monarchy. Although Saul initially displayed promise as a leader, he later succumbed to pride, disobedience, and spiritual decline, leading to his eventual downfall. Despite his shortcomings, Saul played a pivotal role in Israel's early monarchy and the establishment of its territorial boundaries. His reign is chronicled in the books of 1 Samuel and parts of 2 Samuel, providing valuable insights into the complexities of leadership, power, and divine sovereignty. Saul's tragic story serves as a cautionary tale of the perils of pride and disobedience, highlighting the importance of humility and obedience in leadership. How many disciples did Jesus have? Jesus had 12 disciples, whom he personally selected to accompany him during his earthly ministry. These disciples, also known as apostles, served as intimate companions, students, and emissaries of Jesus, sharing in his teachings, miracles, and mission. The twelve disciples are, Simon Peter, Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, John, brother of James, Philip, Bartholomew, also known as Nathaniel, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Matthew, also known as Levi, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, also known as Judas, son of James, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed Jesus. Each disciple brought unique backgrounds, personalities, and perspectives to their collective experience with Jesus, contributing to the diversity and richness of the early Christian community. Their relationship with Jesus transformed their lives and empowered them to become bold witnesses for the gospel after Jesus' ascension. Which book of the Bible contains the Ten Commandments? The Ten Commandments, foundational principles of moral and ethical conduct in Judaism and Christianity, are found in the book of Exodus, specifically in Exodus 20 verses 1 to 17. According to the biblical narrative, the Ten Commandments were given by God to the prophet Moses on Mount Sinai during the Israelites' wilderness sojourn. They represent a covenantal code of behavior intended to guide human relationships with God and one another, emphasizing love, reverence, and obedience. The commandments cover a range of ethical imperatives, including monotheistic worship, respect for authority, Sabbath observance, familial obligations, and prohibitions against murder, theft, adultery, false witness, and covetousness. The Ten Commandments continue to hold profound moral and theological significance for believers, serving as a timeless standard of righteousness and a blueprint for virtuous living. What is the shortest verse in the Bible? The shortest verse in the Bible is, Jesus wept, John 11 verse 35, found in the Gospel of John. Despite its brevity, this verse encapsulates a profound moment of empathy, compassion, and human emotion in the life of Jesus. The context of this verse is the death of Lazarus, a dear friend of Jesus, and the subsequent grief experienced by Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha, and the mourners gathered around them. Despite knowing that he would soon raise Lazarus from the dead, Jesus enters into the sorrow and suffering of his friends, bearing witness to the reality of human pain and loss. Jesus wept serves as a poignant reminder of Christ's humanity and his solidarity with humanity in our deepest moments of anguish and despair. It demonstrates Jesus' capacity for empathy and his willingness to enter into our brokenness, offering comfort and hope amidst our trials and tribulations.